How's it going everyone, this is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel where I always try to look at things from another perspective, although that might frequently be an overclocker's one. Today's video is in line with that ideology and I'll be showing you what a regular old RX Vega 64 card in a custom loop is going to give you performance wise if you're looking to push the card to its max. I built this custom loop cooled PC based on the i7-7700K and the RX Vega 64 a few weeks ago and ever since I've been trying to push the card and see how much hidden potential can be found in that pretty large silicon die. Right now my power color reference RX Vega 64 has an alpha cool Nexus GPX block on it. This is a full cover block but only the GPU is water cooled while the other components on the PCB rely on air cooling through the massive heatsink this entire block really is. In practice this works rather well and with core and HBM pushed to its max I'm seeing lukewarm to the touch temperatures on the water block surface while we were pushing 60 plus celsius which is almost scalding hot with the reference air cooler at stock in some spots on the card. I'm also rocking a double 360mm Alpha Cool XT45 rad up top and a regular 240mm ST30 rad in the front with a total of 5 Alpha Cool E loop fans running at 1200 rpm. I went through a few performance phases with this Vega card. Bone stock with subpar results, then undervolt resulting in better performance and lower temperatures, the Morpheus 2 mod that allowed me to overclock the card even further and now finally the water block enabling me to go full throttle on this card without worrying about temperatures anymore. Right, so let's look at how the card performs at bone stock with the water block on it. I haven't touched any settings here and like I saw with the Morpheus 2 air cooler we're hovering around 1550MHz on average but a pretty stable 1550 unlike the stock reference blower. Also unlike the reference air blower running 50% extra power target does result in an immediate clock boost to around 1610MHz again behaving quite stable. We're looking at around 38 Celsius during load and a constant 26 Celsius ambient so there's huge headroom for higher clocks here. So I started raising the bar with patience and I finally settled on a maximum of 1720MHz target core clock at 1.2V and HBM at a pretty damn respectable 1140MHz. But during actual load that 1720MHz target translates to a locked 1690MHz core clock running at 40 Celsius load temperature. Still a lot of room here but only apparently since I'm hitting the maximum board power now and the other option of lowering the voltage will only give me instant crashes. It also severely irks me that I can't reach that psychological threshold I'm targeting myself 1700MHz during load. So what else is there to do? Well flashing the reference liquid cooled RX Vega bias for one. It has higher board power and lets me up the voltage to 1.25 volts from the max of 1.2 volts on the air cooled cards. Opening up GPU Z you can see that this initially air cooled Vega was specced at the regular 1630 MHz boost clock. I went ahead and saved the original VBIOS and then jumped over to Tech Power Up where you can find a very large collection of GPU VBIOSes. I searched for the PowerColor RX Vega 64 models and sure enough there's the liquid cooled edition. Don't exactly know why there's two, I checked and they're both for Samsung based HBM, not one for Hynix and one for Samsung, so I just picked the more recent one. Flashing is extremely easy and done directly from Windows with ATI WinFlash version 2.77 linked in the description. It's a matter of loading the desired BIOS and hitting program and a few seconds later I get a successful flash message and a reboot required prompt. Now that we've done this it's time to check if we've got new clocks and sure enough there's the target 1750MHz boost the liquid cold cards come with at stock. Unfortunately running any sort of 3D load with stock settings results in immediate crashes on my particular GPU and this is because the 1750MHz target at only 1.2V is not enough for my die and I highly suspect that water cooled editions run binned chips. 
Also unfortunate is the fact that I really lost the silicon lottery with my Vega die. It's not a great undervolter, not a great overclocker and has a hard wall at 1700 MHz during load no matter the voltage I throw at it. This is good in a way since what I'm showing you here is not a cherry pick to die but rather what anyone should expect with a custom loop cooled Vega 64 card. So, while I didn't go beyond 1700 MHz with the liquid cooled VBIOS, it did allow me to at least reach a clean 1700 MHz during load. I mean, at least my inner nagging voice can rest easily now, I guess. But is this all the LC BIOS did? Well, not exactly. Through the higher board power that's now allowed, I'm getting much more stable clocks during extreme 3D loads like Superposition 4K Optimized, which is the only workload right now that drops from the locked 1700MHz by around 20-35MHz to 35 MHz depending on the scene. As a result of the much more stable clocks I'm getting with this BIOS, I went from around 6800 score at 4K optimized setting to 7150 plus, a truly remarkable result here, especially since this is without HBCC on, which would boost me another 150 to 200 points. What about gaming performance? Well, I'm not going to show you the same games where the RX Vega 64 at a locked 1550MHz was already on par or slightly faster than its main competitor DGTX 1080. Nope, I'll just pick these four titles where it was lagging behind and compared to the measuring stick GTX 1080 at 1080p and ultra wide 3440x1440 just like I did in my initial card review. So let's start with Rise of the Tomb Raider, the title where Vega was trailing by a pretty significant 10 FPS. I also overclocked the GTX 1080 to 2070 MHz on the core and 11 gigabits per second effective VRAM clock to get a good sense of what both these cards can do when pushed to their max. And we've jumped by a significant 10 FPS on Vega and by around 4 FPS on the 1080. This still puts the GTX as the faster card, but things change back at 3440 by 1440 where Vega is pushing above 63 FPS average. Still a 10% jump from the previous 1550MHz benchmark, so an important overclock indeed. Alright, next up on the list is Witcher 3 and this is the game where I saw the biggest improvements. We are talking a massive 15% from the previous 1550MHz under Volt OC, placing the RX Vega cleanly up top. I also got a massive boost to 1% lows and this goodness carried over to 1440p ultra wide as well, with the 64 giving me a beefy almost 79 FPS, around 8-9 FPS on average, more than the undervolt overclock. The third worst performer last time was Ghost Recon Wildlands. And like I said in the Vega review, no matter the card, this game is extremely taxing and the visuals don't warrant the performance in my opinion, but Vega now manages to hang with the 1080 in this title. The GeForce is clearly up top, netting close to 70 FPS, but the 1700MHz overclock on the Vega put it back on the map. It's also a hair faster, and I really do mean a hair, at 1440p ultrawide. So both these overclocked cards are identical at this resolution in Wildlands. Far Cry Primal was a little faster on the GeForce last time, and it still is. But for all intents and purposes, these two cards are absolutely tied with just a few 1% low FPS more on Vega. Like last time, 1440p ultrawide paints a different picture and the GeForce went back up top and then the Vega above it, again with a nice 75 FPS on average. And lastly, The Division was not exactly faster on the 1080 in my initial review, but I wanted to see what kind of performance uplift we're talking about in this game. And we are looking at a massive, almost 17 FPS delta between the overclocks and it's now clearly and cleanly the faster out of the two cards at 1080p. And of course this carries over to 1440p ultrawide, as you'd expect, with a delta of 8 FPS to the previous 1550MHz RX Vega 64 undervolt overclock. Hopefully, with it being clear now that this is not exactly the top overclocking Vega 64 card and still gets good results, the real debate is that of the water block costs. Add this to the initial card cost and you're at 1080 Ti or even above that price level. Obviously, custom loop enthusiasts running Vegas will water cool them since they do the same for any other GPU in their system. 
As far as the alpha cool water block itself, I really am impressed with the results. Looks are a matter of taste and I just happen to like this more than the plexiglass water blocks, but really, the Morpheus 2 option is a great middle point in both performance and price, although it's not without its drawbacks. Anyway, let me know if you want to see more Vega related content and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. If you want to further support Mind Blank Tech's growth, then please check out my Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description. See you next time everybody, bye bye.